Let's make camp after we get out of the forest. What do you say? I'm fine with it. How are you feeling, Mr. Jurian? I'm fine with that. What is it? The compass is working! Great! Nothing. Let's move. The compass is working. Which means we can rely on the map again. Oh, that's good. As for the book I'm going to write... Yes? Have you decided the title? Yes. I will call it... Notes on Shuaru. Notes on Shuaru. Yes, that's the title. The title is actually not a good choice for a book on geographical discoveries. On one hand, there is no doubt that Shua Zhi is a difficult word for the target readers of this book. On the other hand, the word notes, in most cases, is used to describe the collections of informal essays. They usually record the daily talks of professional writers, and thus include a variety of ideas and inspirations. As a geographer, however, I don't possess enough knowledge of literature to write the real notes, nor does the assistant who takes dictations from me, unfortunately. <laughs> Even so, we have decided to use these words for the title. Postscript. The title has also been included in the first draft we sent to the editors of Motherland Documentary and the Department of Publication Review. The next page is missing. Let me see. Oh, found it. June 4. Sunny. I never knew the journey back to Omsk would take so long. My assistant and I set off from Yekaterinburg last year, and we didn't arrive until now. In Omsk, we met the governor again. I left him some drafts of this book, in return for the help from the local scientific research association. Those drafts have recorded the steppe ecosystem around the Om River in detail. For example, before we arrived in Omsk, we followed a herd of sheep across the river. The wool on their tails was apparently matted. I recorded this detail because the way they crossed the water was almost a miracle. It is known to all that sheep can be easily drowned because their thick wool holds them back in water. Yet, things seemed different for those sheep. They had been trained by the local herders and were able to cross the river swiftly, as if they were only several balls of cotton floating on the water. When they came to the shore, I noticed that their hooves were in the shape of a round cake, with one slice missing. <sighs> they climbed out of the water with their little cake hooves, shook themselves dry, and continued on to the next pasture, never hesitant to go forward, never looking back. Seeing all these, I hope I would be as determined as these sheep in my future journey. 
Today's article was an extract from a geographic manuscript from St. Pavlov Foundation Far East Branch, recorded by Yenisei. Next is the news broadcast. Radio? Yes, I'm here. I... What time is it now? It's 4.15pm. The nap went on a little longer than I thought. Yes. How are you feeling? I think I had a dream. Many animals were jumping over a broken bridge. I read you a story which has zebras and sheep in it. Zebras and sheep? I don't remember that. Hmm? Excuse me? Is Timekeeper in the room? I am. May I come in? There is something I need to confirm with you. I'm sorry. Who's that? taken too long a nap. Never mind. Please, come in. Timekeeper, you don't look very well. Are you alright? It's okay. I had a weird dream. What's going on? Oh, it's a letter from the Foundation. A colleague from the Russian branch was transferred to the headquarters today. She has shown a strong willingness to perform long-term field missions. Thus, the headquarters intends to transfer her to the Timekeeper Squad. Would you have a meeting with her? It is said that she is experienced in geographical exploration and survival in the wilderness. She could be a great helper. Geographical exploration? What's her name? Please hold on. Let me check her file here. And her name is... Yenisei. 